What is going on YouTube? Gabmus here. Welcome to this new video. Today we'll make a real quick tutorial and show you how to install Arch Linux from the command line using systemd boot. I've recently had to install uh, Arch Linux manually on a system where I couldn't install Grab2 because of an NVMe drive. And I found out that uh, the wiki page about installing systemd boot is a little bit too confusing as of now. So I just wanted to make this video real quick. Uh, because I wanted to show you how easy it is and hopefully it will be helpful for you in the future. Now, there are a couple of reasons why you may want to use systemd boot instead of grab2. Uh, the main reason is probably because uh, grab2 is a really an old piece of software and as for NVMe drives, uh, it's not really up to date with the latest technologies out there. On the other hand, systemd boot is made for working on UEFI systems with GPT and I also found that it boots a little bit quicker and it's also really easier to install compared to Grab2, at least from the command line. So guys, with no further ado, let's check it out. All right, so this is the Arch um, Live CD. We're talking about the vanilla Arch, nothing fancy like Antergos or Architect, just vanilla Arch. So what we want to do, the first thing is uh, set the keyboard layout and this is already a US keyboard, so the layout will be fine. Uh, second thing we want to do is maybe you want to set a bigger font so that you can read it uh, better. So uh, set font sun 12 by 22 should be called this way. All right, so here we have uh, a bigger font. Uh, now this is really useful if you're using something like a high dpi display you can set uh the console font to uh the sun 12 by 22 font so that you can read what what's in the screen and you don't have to use a magnifier lens first let's see if you're connected to the internet we should be since this is a virtual machine but you never know and there we have it so we're connected to the internet. Next thing is updating the system clock. And to do this, uh, there is a really small, simple command, time date CTL set NTP true. Perfect. Now, the second thing we need to do is partitioning the disk. So since this is a UEFI installation, uh, the first thing we want to do is, um, implying we have a brand new hard drive, we need to make a partition table on it. And to do this, I usually use parted, so GNU parted. Uh, it's not really that easy to use, but all you have to do here is create a simple partition table. And uh, we have to use the MK label or MK table, it's just the same thing, uh, command. So MK label GPT should be something like this. Now we have it, it's done. So now um, we can quit parted and we can start partitioning the disk. To do this, we have to use CG disk. I mean, you can use a uh, normal G disk, but CG disk is the cursed version of G disk, which is a little bit easier to use, especially for new people, for newcomers. I always find CG disk to be um, easier and overall faster than using normal G disk. So the device we want to edit is dev SDA probably. Yep. 20 gigs of free space. Now I made this virtual hard drive this small since I don't need to do anything functional on it. I just uh, need to showcase this installation. So we can make a new partition and we're going to make a boot partition. So, um, we're gonna make the EFI partition here and we wanna make it something like, uh, okay, the first sector, we are gonna use default and size in sectors or kilo, mega, giga, tera, petabyte. Uh, we're gonna use something like 400 megs should be enough for most installations. It's probably even overkill, but I prefer to go overkill than uh, find out that my boot partition is not enough for what I need to put in there. So 400 megs is more than fine. Press enter. Now we're gonna enter the um, type of the partition. So we wanna write EF00. Now this is 
this means that we're creating an EFI partition or ESP, EFI system partition. So EF00 here, and I press enter. Current partition name is none. So we enter a new partition name, EFI. That's perfect. Now we're gonna move to this other free space section of the disk. So we're gonna create a new root partition. I usually tend to uh, separate the root partition from the home partition so that I can eventually reinstall the whole system while maintaining the same home folder. So I usually make the root partition something like uh, 20 gigs big, but since the whole disk is 20 gigs, I think I'm gonna just use a single partition here for both root and home. So. Um, size in sectors, we can press enter to get default. This way we will use the entire uh, remaining space in the disk. And current type is 8300 Linux file system. I'm fine with that. And the partition name uh, root since, okay, wait, system. Since this is actually the partition where we install the system. Perfect. Now what we have to do is press right here. Are you sure you want to write the partition table on the disk to the disk? Yes. We press enter, wait for everything to finish, and then we're done. We can quit and we're back to our shell. Now, all we have to do is um, format the partitions we just made. So the first thing I usually do is make sure the partition names um, I have just made correspond to what I should expect. So uh, the first partition, the EFI system, should be uh, dev SDA1. And the second partition, the system partition, should be dev SDA2. But just to make sure, I'm running fdisk-l to list the partitions on my disk. And I was right, perfect. So the partitions are just this simple. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, run mkfs.msdos dash f32 and the partition I want to format so dev sda1 so what I'm doing here is basically formatting the EFI partition to fat32 and this is pretty basic operation uh, I've heard that you can also use x2 but since I've never done that and since well the uh, boot partition is so small and it's not even extensively used I think using fat32 is no big deal so I'm just going with fat32 here and it should be done. Now the next thing we want to do is um, make the other partition an X4 partition. So MKFS X4 dev SDA 2. There we go. This will take some time since um, making an X4 partition and writing all the inodes is a little bit time consuming. You see here it didn't take so long because I'm running this in a virtual disk that's just 20 gigs big, so no big deal at all. But if you're running uh, the same command on something like an actual hard drive or SSD, it will take some time. So the next thing we wanna do here is mount the partitions. This is really easy. All we have to do is write mount um, dev sda2, this is our root partition, into mnt. When this is done, we have to create a new folder. So mkdir make directory into mount. We want to create a boot folder where to mount the boot partition. There we have it. Now we just have to mount dev sda1 into mnt slash boot. And this is all we have to do to mount the partitions we just created. Now we want to install the base arch system into the MNT folder, which represents our disk that we just formatted. So we want to run backstrap slash MNT base. Now this will take some time since it's gonna download every package on the fly, so make sure again you have a working internet connection and just wait for it to finish. It will take some time. All right, now that the base system is installed, we want to change root into the actual installed system. So we all we have to run is arch, oh wait a second, arch dash ch root slash mnt and boom, we're in the new installed system. Now we want to do some things before uh, continuing the installation. The first thing we wanna do is set the time zone and to do this we have to run 
uh, ln s. I want to make a symbolic link from uh, slash usr share zone info and then your region and city. So in my case, Europe, Rome. We want to make this link to slash etc slash local time. Boom, it's done. Now we have to run hardware clock dash dash sys to hc. Next thing is we want to uh, generate the locale we want to use. So um, we want to add it um, etc locale dot gen. And we want to find the n dash us row and uncomment it and and you want to un uncomment this row with whatever language you're using or you're planning to use since um, some applications need the uh, NUS locale to run. For instance, many Steam games will give you uh, a warning if you do not have this locale in your system. So make sure to uncomment that first and then whatever line that corresponds to your language. Now we're done here. Uh, next thing to do is run locale dash gen. Pretty straightforward. Next thing we want to set the host name. So we just run, um, in my case, echo. Let's call this vbox arch zero zero. And we want to write that into slash etc slash host name. And it's done. Now you may also want to add your host name to uh, your etc hosts file. So if you want to do that, just run vi etc hosts. Or if you do not know how to use vi, you should learn how to. Um, just kidding, you can use nano as well. So I'm just going to use vi here. And you're gonna um, copy this row here and change localhost to your host name. So vbox arch zero zero. And same thing here. So vbox arch zero zero. Now, the next thing you wanna do is uh, generate, oh shucks, I forgot to do one very important thing. So before uh, running chroot into uh, the machine, you have to generate the FS tab. I forgot to do that in the first place, I always forget to do it, but you can run it at this point too, it doesn't really matter, so just run exit in your chroot session and then just run genfs tab dash u slash mnt and write that file to slash mnt slash etc slash fs tab and it's done so again uh, you want to uh, ch root into your uh, mnt folder the next thing you should do is uh, run mk init cpio by linux but um, the Linux package does this automatically uh, when using Packstrap, so you do not need to do that anymore, except if you're using special configurations, uh, then you will probably need to edit the mkinitcpio.com file, and then you probably have to run mkinitcpio-p Linux anyway. But uh, if you're doing this, you know what you're doing, and I'm not here to tell you what to do. So the next thing to do is uh, change the root password, so just run pass wd and just enter a new password perfect finally we have to install a bootloader and for this tutorial we want to install systemd boot to do this it's actually really simple you just have to run boot ctl dash dash path equals slash boot which is our efi partition or esp partition install boom systemd boot is installed now this is not everything you have to do to make it running uh, we have to do something else and I mean we have to configure systemd boot 
uh, I highly suggest you to install Tmux in the host operating system. So not in the ch root session, but instead in the live session. So just run pacman s Tmux. Sorry, pacman s y Tmux because it needs to uh, refresh the repositories. So once Tmux is installed, just run Tmux from your um, live shell and you have this nice view over here. All you have to do now is press control B and the percent sign to have a nice uh, horizontal split screen. Now to switch between the two panels, you have to, to press control B and then the arrow keys uh, left to right to go left or right. You can also um, split vertically if you prefer using the quotes instead of the percent sign. So control B quotes and you'll be uh, splitting your screen vertically, but uh, it just comes down to personal preference. It is just a tool we need to uh, make things easier. So what you wanna do now is run lsblk-f. This command will show you uh, the various partitions on your system and the um, UUIDs of each of them. So we wanna probably resize the uh, right panel so that it shows more since I cannot uh, properly read the UUID like this. So just run control B colon resize pane um, dash L, so left, and something like 15 should do. Yeah, it works, kind of. So as you see here, we have SDA2, that is the X4 partition we made, and SDA1, which is the VFAT or FAT32 partition that we used for boot. Now on the left pane instead, we need to uh, get back to the CH root session and you have to edit some configuration files. So let's just run vi slash boot uh, slash should be loader slash loader.conf. So this one is the configuration file of systemd boot. Now, uh, you probably wanna leave everything like this, except you may probably want to change default and change it to something like arch-star instead, since this should work with every configuration of yours. But you probably do not want a timeout. If you want more information about editing this configuration file, just go to the systemd boot page on the arch wiki. I'm sure you will find whatever you need there. I'm just gonna leave it like this. If you do not have particular needs, I suggest you to leave it like this and then just save and quit your editor. The next thing you wanna do is create an entry for the bootloader. So to do this, you just have to run uh, vi slash boot slash loader slash entries and then something like arch.conf. Now in this configuration file, we have to put all the information that the bootloader needs to boot our system. So first thing, a title. Uh, as a title, I wanna use Arch Linux, straightforward. Linux, and you wanna insert slash VM Linux with the Z and dash Linux here, then new line init, init RD and slash init ram fs dash linux then we're gonna go to new line again and write options here root equals uuid equals and then the uuid of the partition that we used for root so in this case, uh, we want to use the UUID of DevSDA2. And this is why I wanted you to install Themax because now you have uh, the UUID on the right side of your screen. Now, uh, you should be able to use Themax to copy and paste the UUID directly without needing to write it manually, but this doesn't always work, especially on a live system, so you can you can always try. Once we're done copying it, 
we have to insert space rw. Now we're done editing this file, we should be ready to go. So let's exit all the shells we were into, reboot, and hope for the best. And there we have it. This is our newly installed system. Let me just log in real quick. There you go. This is our new installed system. We installed this from co the command line. It wasn't that difficult, was it? And especially using systemd boot, uh, your boot should be a little bit faster than using something like Grab2. You're using now modern technology like UEFI and systemd boot instead of all technology like MBR and uh, Grab2. So now you can go ahead and install everything you need like your desktop environment of choice, your login manager, and all the programs that you need. And you have your system ready to go. So guys, this is gonna wrap up this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there. And also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Again guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.